In this video, we'll answer the burning question, what is the Laplace transform of the Dirac Delta? So what is beautiful L of this infinite spike at zero? So remember Dirac Delta just looks like this, very thin and then jumps up to infinity and back down to zero. And this is related to the most important property of Dirac Delta, which I would like to state now. So fact, for any function f, function f of t, let's see what happens when you multiply the Dirac by f and integrate. So we have the following. If you take Dirac delta times f and you integrate, let's think what happens. Well, look what is the Dirac delta. Again, it's zero everywhere except at zero. So really, the Dirac delta concentrates things at zero. So it should come to no surprise that if you multiply this by any function and integrate, it actually gives you the value of f at zero. And again, intuitively, it's because Again, the Dirac delta is zero except for t equals zero. So most that integral should be zero. So really this delta t f of t, f of t concentrates things at zero. things or concentrates if you want f to become f of zero. This is sometimes called localization to become f of zero. And in fact, by the way, this is sometimes the definition of the Dirac delta in advanced math. It's just this weird tool that if you if you multiply with a function, you integrate it, it gives you the value at zero. And by the way, if you're curious about the proof in the lecture notes at the end, there's an appendix actually proving this from the construction that we gave before. But here, we just take it as a given. And in particular now, we can answer the question, what is, the Laplace transform of Dirac delta. And the cool thing is, it turns out the Laplace transform of Dirac delta is just one. Which is very surprising because we found before that the Laplace transform of one gives you one over s, but we never figured out which function has Laplace transform one. So once again, if you take the Dirac delta, you take the L, then turns out you will get the function one, at least for positive S. Okay. And why is that true? We just use the definition of the Laplace transform. Why? Because first of all, so Laplace transform of delta t by definition, that's the integral from zero to infinity of delta t e of minus st dt. But remember the Dirac delta it's zero for negative values of t. 
So this is actually the same thing as the integral for minus infinity to infinity to infinity of delta t e of minus st dt. So again, delta is zero if maybe delta t is zero. if t is negative. And notice this is precisely the same form as the fact above, because we multiply Dirac delta by a function to become the value at zero. So this is delta t times f of t. f of t is e of minus st. So this becomes f of t is e of minus st. So now you can use the fact. So this becomes f of 0. And so this becomes e of minus s times 0, which becomes 1. So the only new thing we really need to know from today is that the Laplace transform of the Dirac delta is 1. And the cool thing is you can also do it at other points because you may notice so far we just focus at zero, but there's nothing special about that. Because what if you want to have a Dirac delta at three? So maybe this is zero and this is three. Well, no problem. Just shift the Dirac delta. So for instance, delta t minus 3 is the Dirac delta at 3. Dirac delta at 3. And you may wonder what happens to all the stuff we talked before. So what is the fact? Well, then you may have guessed it. If you take the Dirac delta at 3, if you want, you can use a U sub, but not even necessary, that concentrates things at 3. Yeah, so for all F. And then the Laplace transform of the Dirac delta And all quick calculations. Again, you could use a shifting property or just do it directly. So this becomes the integral from zero to infinity of delta t minus three, e of minus st dt. And then once again, because the Dirac delta is zero for t less than three, that becomes integral for minus infinity to infinity of delta t minus 3, e minus st dt. And once again, this is our f of t. So this becomes f of 3, because things concentrate at 3, and it becomes e of minus s times 3 and it becomes e of minus 3s. So the Laplace transform of Dirac at another point is e of minus c, or minus that point times s. So fact, the Laplace transform of Dirac at c is e of minus cs. So here you get pure exponential functions, not like divided by S as before. And lastly, let's just do a quick wrap up example. So what if you had to do Laplace transform of four delta T minus two delta T minus three plus five 
delta t minus six. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You're allowed to use the formulas directly. So I think it becomes four minus two e of minus three s plus five e of minus six s. It's a big success. It's a big success. And in the next video, what we want to do, of course, we want to apply to differential equations and solve ODE with Dirac Delta using our formulas here.